Welcome to lesson number nine of our Sabbath school. Allow me to pray with you as we begin. Our gracious Father in heaven, we invite your presence now as we start this lesson. We pray for the Holy Spirit to lead and guide us into all understanding. Be with each member as they follow this uh, lesson, as they uh, process this lesson for themselves. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Lesson number nine of our Sabbath school is uh, counterintuitive, very counterintuitive. Remember the general theme that we are pursuing uh, this quarter is um, uh, crucibles. In the crucibles with Christ, in the crucibles with Christ. What makes our lesson today counterintuitive is that um, as Christians, we are being asked, we are being requested to live a life of praise in the middle of a crucible. You know, the, the caption to our quarterly lesson for this week is, uh, is quite... Uh, Illustrative, we have a gentleman standing in the middle of flames. And uh, while they are engulfed by these flames, they have to issue praise to God. Very, very counterintuitive indeed. Uh, it's understandable that when life is uh, good, when we are having an easy time in life, for us to praise God. We praise God for the blessings uh, that we receive. However, uh, we are still required. The Christian faith, the Christian religion, uh, following Jesus, requires that even in the middle of crucibles, when the heat is on, when we are in our calamities, when we are going through a rough time in our lives, we still have to display praise. We still have to utter praise to God. Let's go to our memory text, Philippians chapter 4, and we are looking at verse 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say, Rejoice! This is Paul, of course, writing to the Christians in Philippi. He's writing this letter, and um, right here he's saying, listen, rejoice in the Lord always. In other words, rejoice in the Lord 24-7. 24 hours a day, seven days a week, we must rejoice in the Lord. As if that was not enough, Paul reiterates it. He says, again, I say, rejoice. So, as Christians, we have to live a life of rejoicing. No matter what. Whatever we are going through. Whether we are going through um, crippling illness. Whether we are uh, under excruciating pain, whether we um, come to school for students and you don't have enough tuition, you don't have fees, you still have to rejoice in the Lord. For children, okay, let's say your parents decide to divorce. The Bible says rejoice in the Lord always. Look at how counterintuitive this is. And we are told here to rejoice under whatever circumstances. You know, in 2019, 2019, uh, the global U version users, uh, these are people who use this, um, uh, this website, global U version uh, users. The verse that was read most of all the verses in the Bible, the one people read most, according to this Global U Version users, was Philippians chapter 4, verse 6. 
encouraging people to uh, be careful for nothing, okay? Uh, not to be anxious, okay? And he says, yeah, in everything that you are going through, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. Don't be anxious for anything. Rejoice in the Lord always. And Paul says here, again, I say unto you, rejoice. So what we are talking about here is not a fleeting emotional uh, state of being. We are talking about something that is not just ephemeral, something that is uh, shifting or, or passing away quickly. We are talking about a, a, a spiritual trait that we have to develop as Christians, not to be anxious for anything, but through prayer and supplication, we should make our requests known to God. Of course, together with thanksgiving. What we are talking about here, dear friends, all of us need to develop a culture, a lifestyle of praise. Praising God when there is sunshine. Praising God when it is rainy. Praising God when it is stormy. Now, verse 7. Verse 7. And the peace of God, the peace of God which passeth all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. So when we have developed this culture of praise, when we have uh, nurtured within ourselves this culture of praising God at every moment, under whatever circumstance, look at what the Lord does for us. We, we receive from him peace, Illogical peace. Peace that cannot be explained. Peace that people cannot, cannot uh, explain. This peace that comes from God is going to guard our hearts. So there is a reward here. When we have cultivated a life of praise, God gives us the peace, the peace that passeth understanding. You know, our lesson is counterintuitive because... When bad things happen to us, we are supposed to complain bitterly. We are supposed to complain. Tell God how rough things are and complain to him. I remember the uh, incident of Job when Job uh, was um, uh, afflicted with all these uh, sores after he had lost virtually everything. I mean, lost uh, his children. He lost all the property he had. Uh, the, 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 the calamities cleaned Job up. He remained with nothing apart from uh, the, the wife that was on, on his side. And, and the wife comes to him and says, you know, Job, why don't you just curse God so that you may die? Of course, Job was not uh, in agreement with that uh, suggestion. And, 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 and Job utters a statement. He says, you know what? From my mother's womb, I came out naked, and I'm going to exit this world naked, you know, without anything. Uh, praise be to the name of the Lord. Job is doing something so counterintuitive, something that is so illogical. And the reason is, when we praise God under those circumstances, which should provoke uh, resentment, which should provoke bitterness, when we praise God, just the way Job praised God, God gives us a quality of peace which cannot be explained. How can Job praise God after all these things had happened to him? What happened to Job? Having this peace that surpasses understanding is something that can happen to all of us when we nurture, deliberately cultivate this culture of praising God in our lives. I just want to have some uh, more examples that we can talk about here. 
uh, we have heard about the walls of Jericho that collapsed uh, without any military attack. Uh, Joshua ordered the children of Israel to go around the city uh, throughout the whole week, and then at the end, they were supposed to go around and then blow their trumpets and shout praises to God. When they did, when they did that, God unleashed from his uh, armory, from his uh, uh, infinite set of uh, weapons, he, uh, he unleashed a power that uh, caused the walls to come crumbling down. Now, you may ask me, what exactly did God do? I don't know. I don't know what he did. But what I know is that um, we serve an almighty God. This almighty God, when he has to do something, uh, defeat our enemies, uh, defeat our situations, at his disposal is an infinite range of capabilities he can call into action without warning. That's why he is almighty God. He is asymmetrical. The way he fights, the weaponry he uses is infinite. His arsenal, his armory, his weapons are limitless. You know what God can do? He can just... Um, uh, call bees, and bees can defeat an army with the latest technology because uh, God's ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. At his fingertips, he can weaponize anything that he has created. And what happened on that day when the praises went up, God's armory of capabilities were unleashed. And what happened is the walls came trembling down. That was the result of God's intervention. Whatever weaponry he used, we do not know. But this is what is going on here. When you and I raise our voices in praise, when we are going through hardship, when we are going through the difficulties of life, God is called into action. We don't have to tell him what type of weapon to use. Being God, being almighty, being asymmetrical, God has this full, infinite range of possibilities that he will call uh, to come and fight for us. And things will happen. At the end of it all, we will know that God has been victorious. We have been rescued from our predicament because praise went up. The praises went up, just like in the case of uh, Joshua there uh, when they encycled the, uh, the walls of Jericho. In Psalm 145, I just want us to visit that psalm quickly. Uh, psalm 145, um, and we are going to meet David here in Psalm 145. Uh, I just want to pick a few verses there. Uh, he says here from verse 1, I will extol thee, I will exalt thee, I'll raise you up, my God, O King, and I will bless thy name forever and ever. A lifestyle. Of praise. Uh, we are meeting somebody here with a culture of praise. If you go into the life of David, he was uh, a shepherd, took care of, uh, of sheep, and uh, you know his experiences killing a lion, killing a bear in the name of the Lord, and uh, you also know that um, he killed that, that, that giant, you remember Goliath, uh, most people remember David for Goliath because he was so uh, towering a, a giant and, and David with, uh, with his sling and five stones, just used one of those stones, uh, struck that giant right uh, on, the, on the forehead and, and he collapsed. Not only that, David had a lot of experiences. You remember he was a hunted man. 
Saul wanted David dead. And, and God rescued him. He, he, he delivered him. And from, from time to time, uh, David was experiencing these deliverances. And when these deliverances hit a threshold in his life, they came to a certain level in his life, David could not but praise God consistently and constantly. Here he says in Psalm 145, I will extol thee, my God. O King, I will bless thy name forever and ever. Praising God for David was not just going to be a one-time event. He decided, determined in his heart that it was something that was going to be recurring, something that was going to be happening forever and ever. You know, dear friends, my prayer for me, my prayer for you, is that um, as you develop this culture of praise, as you develop this lifestyle of praise, even in the crucibles of life, even in the dire straits of life, when life is, 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 is hard and you are going through some difficult time, but you have developed this culture of praise, I'm saying that when you develop that culture of praise, Pray to God that it's not a, a fleeting uh, sensation. Pray that it becomes a permanent fixture in your life. It becomes your lifestyle. It becomes your culture to praise God, whether things are good or whether things are not good. You know, we have Paul and Silas, uh, these giants of the gospel, uh, Paul uh, we know that most of the New Testament books were written by Paul, a uh, prolific writer, but he also had a um, wonderful walk with the, with the Lord. Paul went about preaching the gospel in the Gentile world. He was um, the uh, apostle to the Gentiles. And at, at this particular time, him and Silas were imprisoned for preaching the gospel. They were put to jail. They were locked up in prison. And during the night, they sang songs of praises to God. They sang. And um, we are told that um, uh, right in, you know, uh, midnight, the, there was some earthquake and uh, the, the prison doors were opened. Uh, their shekels fell and, and they, they walked out. And when, when they were in the process of going out there, the, the jailer was about to kill himself. He said, if these people escape, I will be dead meat. I might as well just kill myself. And then Paul and Silas told the jailer, and said, please don't, don't, don't kill yourself. We are okay. We are here. We're not going anywhere. And uh, then the jailer had this poignant question to ask uh, of si Paul and Silas. He says, what must I do in order to be saved? Can you see what's going on here? When we praise God in our adversity, when we praise God with our hands cuffed and chained, we send a message a message about our God, whom we are praising. And it triggers in the onlookers, on people that are looking at us, it triggers the question, what must we do to be saved? What must we do to be in your situation? You look saved. We want to be saved as well. So if we do this praise thing correctly, and well in our lives. If we praise God, come rain, come shine. If we praise God under all circumstances, especially when we are going through difficult times, when we are in our crucibles, the results are going to be resounding. Somebody's life 
is going to be changed. Somebody is going to give their life to God because of what they see in us when we do the counterintuitive. Instead of cursing God, we bless Him, we praise Him. When that happens, it triggers something in people's heart. So my prayer for you, my prayer for me, uh, as we continue to meditate on this week's lesson, is that um, God may give us courage to embrace a life of praise. When we have embraced a life of praise, many good things are going to happen. Not just to us, but to those that see us uh, go through a crucible with a song of praise on our hearts. When that happens, the character of Jesus is being reflected now in our lives. The one who said, forgive them, for they don't know what they are doing. The one who could forgive his persecutors, his killers, because they didn't know what they were doing. In saying so, he was giving glory to God. And many good things happened. We know there was the thief uh, on the cross who got life because he gave himself to Jesus, gave his life to Jesus. And Jesus promised him. He said, verily, verily, I say to you today, comma, I will be with you in paradise. You know, people place the, uh, misplace the comma there and they come up with a total, uh, totally different theology. But Jesus was promising somebody uh, life eternal uh, on that day. And um, uh, we know that when Jesus shall come, not only the thief on the cross, but many more uh, who have uh, embraced him over the years are also going to rejoice eternally. But the bottom line of our lesson, the bottom line of our lesson, may God give you a culture of praise in your life. So that from that culture of praise, even if you are in a crucible, you may radiate salvation to those that are around you. Allow me to pray with you as we conclude our lesson today. Father in heaven, I'm speaking to somebody uh, who is going through a rough time. We are praying, Lord, that um, you may give them courage, uh, courage to know that uh, uh, as they praise you, in the middle of their storm, in the middle of their crucible, you are going to bless them. Not only them, but they that also look at them as they go through this ordeal. May you bless us to this end, O oh Lord, to develop a culture, a culture of praise, no matter what. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen.